Well, I made an executive decision and played through January because the transfer window was a lot more active than I intended it to be, and we made a few moves I wasn't anticipating making. On the other hand, we're doing really well. That could all come to a crashing halt today, though. My name's FM Jellico, and this is The Return Out Glory with SC Bastia, episode 54. So this is where we currently stand. We are tied for 6th place. St. Anian is beating us on goal differential. Lyle Foster leads us with 12 goals. Antoine Bernade has a 7.4 rating. Arma no. 10 assists from the right wing position. That is, that is very, very good. Andre Sotovia, an 89% completion percentage. Most of the match, most player of the match awards is uh, Bernade with 4. Uh, no and Brigado are having a race to see who can get the most yellow cards. They're currently tied. And uh, Afonso Souza has a straight red. He leads us there. In 21 matches, we've scored 32 goals, which is 7th highest. We've allowed 27, which is 7th best. Our yellow cards is uh, 37, which is 6th uh, highest. And our attendance is topped out at 15th highest. I think what we're going to have to do is buy the ground and then go for a new stadium. But that's going to be in a couple of years. Because right now, we're working on the training and youth facilities. Uh, our youth facilities have been upgraded. Our training facilities are in the process of being upgraded. So... What to do first? You know what? We're going to look at the transfer window first. On the outs. Stephen Horn went to Brentford for 73,000 euros, going up to 120,000 euros based on appearances. Sasha, who um, I loaned to Validoid, is at 36,000... Or 36,000. Yeah, 36,500 euros per month. Plus, they're paying part of his salary. Leon came after Diakide and made an offer for 8 million euros. And he really wanted to go there. And the first time they made the offer, I said no, and the locker room went freaking nuts. Now, it's easy to see why he wants to go to Leon because they are currently in fourth place. Where I screwed up was I probably could have got, I, I could have gotten more money for him. I paid $7 million for him, and I sold him for eight. In addition to that, he got a sell-on fee of about 1.5 million euros. So I actually lost money on this. I was just, I was so frustrated by the fact that he wanted to leave to a team that is really not much better than us, that I uh, I just, I took the offer. I couldn't negotiate it more, but I, just, I was so disgusted. I just, you know, yep, go on, get out. A um, couple coaching things have happened. Uh, Valencia came after us. Thomas Tuckle, who was Tuckle, Tuchel who was at PSG and went to Valencia, got fired, and they asked me if I was interested. I said no. Uh, France offered me the head coach position. I said no. Um, who else? Uh, one of the German clubs. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach? I can't remember off the top of my head. But for the longest time, I wasn't getting any job offers. And then all of a sudden, all the job offers for clubs in League One that came open, they were like, my name was kind of bandied about as, oh, hey, we might go after him. But no one's ever offered me an interview. Uh, on the ends, Tom Colbrant comes to us on loan from Chelsea because literally the day after I uh, let Sasha go, Kane Wilson tore his hamstring. Or no, that happened in January. No, Kane Wilson tore his hamstring and was out three to four months. Sasha, who was down to a star and a half current ability, star and a half potential ability, just wasn't going to be a full-time starter. Sevka Rezic, Sev Sevkija, Resic. <sighs> names today, jeez. Um, is two-star current, three-star potential, and unhappy because he's not getting enough playing time, even though I've given him a decent amount of playing time. I went out to see who was available on loan, and Tom Colburn was. Uh, four-star current ability, five-star potential ability. We're paying his salary, and I'm more than comfortable doing that because the club came to me and said, hey, you're doing really well. Do you want to renegotiate where you think you'll finish? And they gave me a Decent amount of money in the transfer budget, which I then took out and put into the wage budget. So we've got plenty of wage budget. 11,000 pounds a week for playing, 22,000 when he's not used. He's my starting right back until the end of the season. He's done really, really well for us. He plays wing back really nice, which is what I which is what I wanted. Um, we're not going to be able to keep him just because his value is too much. I mean, we've spent more money this year than we have at any other time, almost $25 million. Uh, when you take into account all the moves we've made. But 
I think it'll be a while before we get a transfer budget over 25 or 30 million euros, to be honest with you. We need a really good finish this year just to crack 20 million. I mean, we finished six last year and we got, what, 15, give or take? But he's come in. He's my starting defensive right back now. Uh, Resic is the backup. And uh, he's doing really well for us. He's been very, very good. Next in, Valentino Muller, who my scout found. He was playing at SCR Alltact, who I want to say is, a yeah, they're a club in Austria. Three-star current ability, three-and-a-half star potential ability. I brought him in as depth on the defensive midfield. He plays a really good Segundo Volante, but I'm not playing him as that. I'm playing him as an anchorman. He is Soldovia's primary backup. But I've got this two defensive midfield formation I'm working on that he'll play the Segundo Volante move up on. He's also a capable midfielder. Solid physicals, solid mentals. The technicals are great where they count. You know, a couple of them are a little low, but they're not that important to his position. The marking and tackling are nice. The technique is nice. The passing is very, very good. The mentals are solid across the board. He's also a very good uh, mentor. He's a little older, which is what I was looking for. And he will be here for the next couple years. And for 2.9, for 2,900 euros, why not take a risk? This is definitely a big risk. Lucian Marin comes to us from Stoya Bucharest. I needed depth at striker because I've got Frank playing at the winger position more often than not. Foster's my primary, Frank's my backup, but Frank has been playing mostly winger. Zadis is technically my third striker, but um, he's not all that great. I've got a couple of youth guys that just, they're, they're not ready for League One football. Lucian Marin was transfer listed by request, and I had scouted him previously because I saw him show up on the Romanian under-21 team in my screen flow, and I really like the look of him. I think he's got a lot of potential. I... They wanted like $12 million for him straight up. I paid $5 million up front, $5 million in payments, bonuses for goals, bonuses for international appearances. He's four-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential ability. And I pulled the trigger on him because Palermo was interested in Foster, and he was making noises about wanting to go there should they offer him a contract. And if Foster left, our club would have been that much weaker. I've got... A nice rotation going. We're playing a lot of matches and a lot of in, in well, we're playing a lot of matches in not a lot of days coming up. And rather than take a risk starting Frank and or Zadis, I wanted someone who could come in and spell Foster and Lucian can't. Going forward, they will probably be switching starts more often than not. And if Lucian improves the last six months of the season like I think he can, it's possible we can move Foster on in the summer. One of the things I like about him, he knocks the ball uh, past his opponent. He tries long-range free kicks. His one goal for us was a free kick from outside the box. He tries first-time shots. So I play him as a complete forward on support. I may actually go back and uh, retrain him as either a deep-lying forward or pressing forward to sit a little back further in the box, but not right at the six-yard penalty box, so he can get the ball, turn around, and just take the shot. And then last but not least, with DKD leaving, I needed a, a replacement for him. While I like Joaquin Medina and uh, Cristiano, not Ronaldo, I've got them rotating every game. One of them starts, one of them comes off the bench, so on and so forth. I'm not comfortable starting them both together, and my depth behind them isn't the best. Jonathan Ponzo was put out by West Ham. Uh, they wanted eight and a half million for him. I got him for seven and a half. One of the other reasons I got him is, in addition to being a nice center back, he can also play defensive left back. Three star current ability, four star potential ability. Comes in at thirty one thousand a week. I had to pay to get him, but like I said, I've got the wage budget for it, and we're getting to the point where our wages are starting to creep up, and that's just inevitable. But you know, a very solid defensive center back. You know, the physicals are nice, uh, with the exception of the natural fitness. That's that's a bit of a bother, but. I don't think he'll be playing 90 minutes every game. Mentals are very nice across the board. Very, very solid. The the uh, technicals, they're good where they count. 12 marking is nice, as is the 12 tackling. The technique and heading are adequate. The crossing and first touch are adequate. But he's a central defender. He's not going to be making a lot of movements into the opposing box. I, I'm fully expecting him to stay back. Now, he wasn't the best at West Ham. He only had a 6.54. And since leaving Angers to go to West Ham, he hasn't been the best, but he's only been a part-time starter there. He's going to be a full-time starter here. I think he will be 
a solid contributor for us. Well, since losing to Troyes in the Kudali fourth round match, we've done really, really well. We haven't lost. We've kept our League One non-losing streak going. We were home against Lorient, and we beat them 3-0 thanks to a goal by Foster, No, and, and uh, Frank. We were then home against Strasbourg in the French Cup ninth round, and we won that game in extra time thanks to a Tom Colburn goal in the 117th minute. Foster scored in the 84th minute to uh, get the draw, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they scored in the 82nd minute, and then we equalized in the 84th minute. I thought we were going to extra time, but I forgot this is the French Cup, not the Coup League, so we played extra time. As you can see, a couple players were very close to uh, dying on the field. It was it was troublesome. We were then uh, home against Montpellier, and we drew with them two, net, two all rather. Lucien Marin got his first goal. No, had a very nice goal in the 26th minute. We were then away at Marseille, and we drew with them two all. This was an interesting game to watch. We were better than Marseille, across the board better than Marseille, but they hung in there and we just could not make the most of our chances. We had 18 shots, 10 on target. We had one woodwork hit, one clear cut chance. Can I put half chances in here? Yeah, I can. You know, one half chance. We had the possession advantage. We just, we could not put it together. Moon Air had two goals for uh, Olympic Marseille to claw the drawback. And it was just frustrating. I thought we had this in the bag. I didn't really touch the team other than making the substitutes. And you know, Munier scored twice in eight minutes to claw the drawback. It was frustrating as all hell. Today, though, it is all about the French Cup 10th round against Monaco. And then we're going to play our first game against Rio Las Palmas in the first cup knockout round of the Euro Cup. So I'm going to go check the best 11, set the reserves, and we're going to be back for the Monaco game in just a bit. Well, actually, depending on how this game goes, this might be the only live com for the day. Uh, we are playing the new formation I was talking about earlier. It's a 4-3-3 a with two defensive midfielders. I would call it a 4-1-2. I don't know. I think, you know, honestly, the more I think about it, I think the roles you have for your players defines what FM calls the formation. If these were more attacking roles, they'd call it a... 4-2-1-2-1 or something like that. I don't know. But this is what we're playing today. Talese in goal. Field, Ponzo, Cristiano, and Colbert as the defensive back four. Soldevia and Muller as the defensive midfielders behind Margeman. Lopez and Menig as the wingers. And Foster up top as the striker. They are going with a slightly weaker formation, which for Monaco means they're still better than us. Okay. We are slightly more match fit than they are. Hopefully that'll help us out. Bastian from Monaco. Drives right up to Muller. Oh, Lopez intercepts that ball. Long pass up to Foster. Tries crossing it, but it's short. Yago has it, but it goes right to Marshman. He sends it up to Foster. He, oh, nice goal. Wow. He slipped it just between the keeper and the post. That was not a huge window, but he sure as heck hit it. Iago headed it down to Margeman, who drove forward. Foster was just between the two defenders. Oh, the keeper should have played that better. Well, maybe the keeper could have played that. He, may, he could have made a better effort on the ball. Yes, he's on sides. Coming up on a half hour, we've definitely been the better squad today. Five shots, three on target. There's seven and two. Knops with the goal kick. Sends it out towards Muller. Field knocks it down, but Ben Nerick's going to send it to Bastian, who sends it up to Peligre. Golovin has it now to Gonzalez. Surrounded by Bastian players. Weak shot. Talese has no problems collecting that. I don't know what Talese is doing. He's holding on to it. He's going to roll it out to Cristiano. He's going to send it back to Talese. He's going to send it long towards Lopez, but it's going to get knocked down by Ben Nerick to Muller. Oh, he avoids the slide tackle. Bastian to Muller. Back to Bastian. To D'Amico. Who sends it over to Golovin. To Gonzalez. Breaks left. Centers it. Peligri's there, and it's over the crossbar. And that is halftime. Well, Monaco's had more shots. And five on target. We've had five and three. We've made the most of our chances. Uh, they've had a slight possession advantage, but it hasn't really helped them. Throw in from Monaco. Yago. Well, Menig kicks it back, but it goes right. Uh, I'm falling behind here. Well, Lopez has the ball now. He's driving forward, all five foot two of them. He's got Foster in the center, crosses it in, but it goes right to Knops. Foster did not move past the defender. 
I think he was maybe afraid of getting caught off sides. Knopf sends it up. It goes right to Coleman, though. Menick almost loses control of the ball. Sends it up to Marshman, who is dispossessed. D'Amico dispossesses him. Kempembe has the ball. Goes to Golovin. Now Iago has it. Sends it up to Peligre, who is sitting between the defenders. Long shot to Lees with a nice block. Corner kick from Monaco. D'Amico sends it in. And Talis snatches that out of the air. Oh, Benaric on the right side of the box. Peligri, and he pushes it just wide. Okay, we're coming up on 65 minutes. So we're... We're coming up on 65 minutes. So we're going to uh, make a couple of subs. Medina is going to come in for Cristiano... Marin is going to come in for Foster. We're going to hold on to the last sub for now. Field just got injured. Nuts. Well, we're going to use our last sub then. Foster is going to come off and Resic is going to come on. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. Potential arm injury. That's not a good sign. Ten minutes left. Bednarik with the free kick. Sends it to Bastian. To Alberto at the top, near the top of the box. Muller. Back to Alberto. Back to Bastian. Drives forward. Muller has it. Ref gets in the way. Bastian has it. Out to Iago on the left. He crosses it in. Knocked away. Oh, and who was that? Roberto? Alberto. Yeah, nice goal by Alberto. A lot of bodies in front of the goal. Talese probably couldn't see the shot. He did well to kind of get in the area, but... Bastian to Iago... Yep, Alberto with a scissor volley kick. Iago with the ball. Back to Kimpembe. To Alberto. To Bastion. Iago's going to cross it in. Rousseau. Oh, guys, come on. I had to sneeze. Sorry, I cut that off here, so we'll follow this here. Bastian to Iago, who crosses it in. Rousseau heads it, goes right to Poligri, who just volleys it past Talese. Son of a gun. Yeah, he was on sides. Marshman dispossessed Bastian. Marin gets behind the defenders. Oh, he hits it right at the keeper. Oh. Five minutes of extra time. Last chance. Ponzo knocks the ball down to Muller. He loses control. Dada has it. To Peligri. Long shot. Hits the crossbar. Talese. Up to Lopez. He's got help on the left, but no, he's going to cross it right to Colburn. Who crosses it over to Resic. Crosses it in too far. Colburn. Sends it in. Alberto's going to knock that away. Corner kick for us. Menig. And Knops grabs that. Son of a gun. Last chance coming up. Knops sends it forward. Dot is there, but Soldevia is going to get it on the rebound. Now he still sends it to Alberto instead. Bastian to Muller. To Alberto. Oh, dispossessed by Muller. <sighs> Nuts. Gave that game away. Two goals in three minutes. In the last ten minutes of the game. We gave that game away. <sighs> yeah, and that game did go a little long. So we lose in the tenth round of the French Cup. This is this is gonna be key right here. Oh, Tom, you're going to play through the injury. <sighs> yeah, i got 10 minutes record so far. I might be able to edit that down to 5 or 6. But you know what? We'll do a double live com next. We'll come back and do the home and away at Real Hispalis. And we'll play Leon offline. So, man, we had that game. 
Sometimes the, the statistics just don't reflect what happened. Yeah, they had more shots than us. They had more on target than us. But we were a better team for the better part of 82 minutes. The guys just forget the game's 90 plus minutes long. That rest... Oh, man. We just... Marin had a chance and he kicked it right at the keeper. Which is slightly annoying because he likes to knock the ball past the opponent. Maybe I can teach him how to round the keeper. I don't know. That's just, that's annoying as all heck. Well, we should do a better job against Real Hispalis. Fingers crossed we will. If you liked what you've seen and heard, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticisms, comments, leave those down below. I'll answer them as fast as I can. If you like the transfer moves, let me know. If you're not a fan of them, let me know. Interested in your feedback. My name is FM Jellico, and I thank you for watching the Return of Glory with SC Bastia, episode 54.